Um, any ideas where this could be? Uh, oh, come on. Isle of Wight. Have we done the Isle of Wight? Oh my God, you've nailed it. It's the Isle of Wight. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have done the Isle of Wight. Yeah, but we've done off the coast of the Isle of Wight. We haven't actually physically done the Isle of Wight. We did that Mesolithic site on the Isle yeah, of Wight. But, that, but that's 20 metres away from the coast, so that that don't count. That's and, we did, and we did a, a horrendous Viking burial thing there, didn't we? <laughs> no, that was in, Way that was in Way Weymouth Arbour. Are you sure? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Oh, 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 Anne's just joined us. You see what happens? What have you <laughs> let Anne on? Right, go on. Right. Am I going to let her on? I'll let her I'll on. Just, I'll okay. just yeah, I'll let her on now. Yeah. There she is. Okay, done it. Okay, brilliant. So we we've mm. we we are we are we are live now. So that that's good. And you know, we occasionally get people joining us from india and wherever <laughs> and uh i just i realized that day you know when we had somebody coming on from india yeah and they were they, they were very insistent on the the, mm. the email for this and the password right um that might be enough for some people to be actually to use the account um you know you've got to know a few other things but if you know what those other things you might be able to sort of use the account for dodgy reasons right so uh it was good that day that i was in a bit of, in a bit of a fluster and i just thought right you know let's just not not do that right so i gotta mention i gotta mention i gotta mention it because and also i haven't looked at the bank account this evening but out of the uh out of i think it's 22 people who do our classes there are two people left to pay for the classes for the next two months and they happen to be part of my Tuesday evening. I'm not going to mention who they are simply because if they paid them, in, paid it in the last two hours, right, it's going to be embarrassing. So everybody else has paid. So there's two people left to pay their 50 pounds for the next two months. I've said it now, sort it out. And that's done. Right. OK, then. And I haven't mentioned anybody and it's not you, Drina. Right. OK. Oh, it could be Idris. Okay. Yes, I'll check later. Hang on a minute. If, it, if it's Idris, that means, oh, my God, this really confuses things. <laughs> anyway, everybody else, thanks for the uh, monies this uh, this month for the next two months. Anyway, thank you very much. Right. So what I'm going to do, a few announcements. I'm going to do the negative one first. Um, and I don't think, I think two of you are not aware. Actually, three of you are not aware of this. Uh, Sandra passed away. Uh, um, Pete, it's mm -hmm. got to be 10 days ago, isn't it now? So yeah. Sandra passed away 10 days ago. Uh, she passed like three days ago, two days before the last week's class. So that's anyway, my maths. But anyway, a funeral is on the 18th of Feb. And Andy said, and Margaret, and I think talking for everybody here, but uh, that uh, it's the, that if anyone wants to sort of send some kind of respects and stuff, um, then I hopefully Peter's got the address or if not, we, we could sort something out. So anyone wants to chat about that in a break can do so. Andy said something about a card or getting a card, everybody to sign. So uh, mm -hmm. I just would like to say Sandra's going to be mentioned in the next Elysig pillar. Uh, and I know all of you who should have had a copy of the Elysig pillar, pillar in the post in the last five days or whatever. So there's going to be in the next copy that, um, Sandra's going to be mentioned. So anything about that you could discuss in the break. So no Andy today, but we're all here. Um, um, and we did miss you last week. And obviously Peter's back to join us today. The other Peter. And uh, oh yeah, David was away last week as well. So it was good to have you back, David. And yep. I would I would like to mention as well that um, Adam, we're sending you a little thank you thing for joining in the post as well, Adam. So that's you. So we're gonna we're gonna start off with the, with the people that we haven't seen for two months. Um, Anne, no, not Anne. Uh, Peter and Peter, what have you been up to in the past two months? And also, Peter, another bit of bad news was that Alan Wilson, the the mm. priest, the um, our Arthurian, not our Arthurian, um, but the Arthurian historian Alan Wilson, passed away in the past few days. So uh, condolences there as well. So. Peter, uh, any news from you, lovely? 
Not not news as such, but I saw something interesting. I was watching um oh what are they called um the uh, prehistory guys. Yeah. Uh, and they did a live show. He was talking about this site in Germany, which I'd seen before. That have been um they've completely rebuilt it, and it's sort of like a it looks like a henge, and it's got a like a wooden palisade circle in the middle. Okay. And he said, you know, I, you know, I, I'd like to go and visit. He, he said, but I'm a bit unsure because that place, before they completely rebuilt it, they only dug there for three seasons and the seasons were only two to three weeks long. Mm. So they probably dug there for about nine weeks total before they then completely rebuilt the site. Can you, can you, uh, well, if you have, if, well, you weren't here last week, right? Mm. But um we 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 looked at Wayland Smithy last week and strangely oh, yeah, enough yeah. We're, we're we're doing an end bit of Wayland Smithy right and lots of us came to the conclusion last week and on Wednesday that Wayland Smithy has practically been completely rebuilt and and there's a little bit more evidence that we're looking at today and what you've just said is this right if you're going to reconstruct the past you do it over there you don't reconstruct the past mm. on the past right mm. And if you are going to reconstruct the past, mm. you 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 allow people to know where the reconstructions are. So I tell you what, the best way to reconstruct the past is to do fiberglass stones, right? The best way to reconstruct the past is to have stones that are a completely different color than the stones. You know, I, I'm not. I am for reconstructing the past, but I'm only for reconstructing the past if you're allowed to know where the past and the modern. Uh, uh, is where it is right so mm. yeah i think that's a really good start to what we're doing today good yeah. and also i found an image of mice how right that has completely changed how i look at mice how oh no oh, and, and, and so so last week i think i think i'm sure we did wayland smithy last week but anyway there was um i think i can remember saying last week a lot um, I'm not going to argue with the archaeology at Wayland Smithy, and I ended up arguing with it all. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and but we did actually have the lecture about mid how the previous week, and it was like I, I, I'm I'm agreeing with most of this, but some of it we, we they, they, it's very it's very rare that I don't disagree with things. But I, I was a millionaire and about doing new grains today, and I I decided not to do it because. The four places that we're going to be visiting today. One, there's a new discovery made on the Isle of Arran yesterday, right? Oh yeah, I saw so that. So I've been, I was desperately trying to find images of that today, so wasn't successful. But I've got a location where the Isle of Arran is and whatever, so we, we'll talk about that. So we, we're doing the Isle of Wight, a standing stone on the Isle of Wight. Interesting, and um, so I wanted to sort of put the Neolithic and so on, and, and another bit of the UK in it. And we do look at mice how because that was the, the end of last week's lecture. <clears throat> we got we got to ten we got to ten o'clock last week, and I said we're doing mice how, and it was like no, I'm not doing it. But we we mentioned it a little bit, mm. and we look at Wayland Smithy a little bit today as well. So that's where that's that's what we do. So if you haven't got anything else to, to say, Peter. Oh, good. <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, oh, you 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 cut out my end, so. <laughs> Oh, all right then, Peter. <laughs> no, you can. Sorry, right. it was very brief, but it, I thought I'd done something there. No, you have done. That's everything. You Thank you so something. much. Yeah, you've been away for two <laughs> months, and uh, uh, you've upset Margaret. Right. <laughs> already. <laughs> yeah, already, yeah. Uh, uh, do you know what? I think Margaret said the other week you upset everybody in these classes. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I was uh, only kidding, Carl. <laughs> yeah, but I do. I do. I even upset <laughs> David. I, it was just not good. Right. Okay then. Talking about David, any news from you this week, David? No, oh, sorry. Okay, don't apologise. <laughs> right, uh, Drina, anything from you? I I follow these group of elephants on Instagram because they they're sorry. like for the get lost. The um they're a family group, <laughs> which is what I like. You know, they behave like a proper family. Okay, and some okay. of them get fall in the mud. And they can't get out without yeah. any help. And I didn't realise how easy it was to happen. Yeah. That 
dinosaurs would fall in the mud and they couldn't get out. Yeah. They, you know, sort of brought it home to me, that's all. Um, yeah. yeah, weirdly enough, I, I, I watched some weird stuff on the internet as well. And there's these guys trying to get an elk. They were hunting elk, right? This is, this is, this is, this is, I think, the good side of hunters, right? There are good hunters. So there was this elk, massive elk. I think it must have been a stag in, in, in the mud in Scandinavia or something. And it was drowning, right? So instead of, well, they could have just killed the thing and it would have been great, right? But instead of doing that, not great because I'm a vegetarian, but you know what I'm trying to say, great for them or whatever. But instead of just butchering the thing, they, 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 they got the thing out of the mud, risking their own lives, right? And they got the elk out. And, and it was just like, you know, we had to do this because, you know, we, we don't like to see these animals suffer because when they kill them, they kill them in a certain way. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it happens. But this massive elk, it couldn't get out. It was huge. It was in the mud. So, yeah, same point. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for that, Rena. I keep but, watching the elephants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're you know, a joy. I like, I, just a joy. They're Good. just a joy. Uh, I, I, I do like elephants. Did you know there's only 18 elephants left in the UK now? And um, I, yeah, I can sort of work. I, I think there's one in Whip, a couple in Whip's Nade. There's a couple down in the southeast there. There's that one in Longleat. Uh, there's a couple in Chester. Um, yeah, there's not many left. But anyway, love elephants as well. Right. OK, then talking about old elephants, David, not David. Peter. God, sorry, David. Really sorry about that, David. Peter. No, I haven't been about. I haven't been out and about. Okay, okay, okay. Good, good. Um, right. Um, a, a young elephant, Andy. He's not yet, Adam. Adam. Isn't that interesting to report that's new? I did go to um West Kennet, Longbar, and Silbury Hall for myself uh, last week, which was cool. Oh. But um, yeah, um, nothing, nothing new though. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, God, who's next? Pat? Yeah, no, no news. Sorry. Right. So I, I, okay, good. I've might have, so far, I've managed to upset uh, um, everyone tonight so far. So, uh, you know. Um, right. So I've got to be nice to everybody now before I insult anyone else. So, um, right. Okay. So let's crack on to where we were last week and i know peter david and Anne missed out on wayne and smithy but I, I can just sort of you know tune you up into that and that's where we're going to go next so let's share screen start now um and that's just, Ooh. where's my little images? Right, okay. Oh, that, that's that's the site in on the Isle of Wight that we're gonna look at, so. Right, okay, so bingo, right? So what I'm gonna do, um, Adam knows what I'm gonna say, right? Adam, there's something missing. What, I, I'm, I, sorry, Anne and Peter and, David, I don't have a location of where this site is, but it's um, it's it's um, near um, Uff the Uffington Horse, and it's near Swindon. So you yeah, three can get an idea. So that's good. So th this this site <laughs> itself is a site that I visited twice, and you know we we had a nice little discussion <laughs> about it last week. And one one of the one of one of the one of the things with this site is that the archaeology doesn't really speak the way it should speak. In that, there's been a great deal of reconstruction, and this is something that Peter was talking about with this site that had been reconstructed abroad. Now, I would like to maybe put something to bed now. And what I'd like to put to bed is that image. 
that image, right? That image <clears throat> is the front of there between those two stones is that image, right? And, and what you can clearly see is these upright stones are not there in this sketch that was done in the 1800s. So therefore, we don't need to presume that one, two, three, four stones have been erected since. Now, that changes our perception of this archaeological monument. And maybe I, I am not being, um, for those, what I'm going to do is I, 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 it, I'm going to go quickly on, and you can see what the front looks like today. So this will help Anne and David and Peter. So let, let's just type in Wayland Smithy, right? And basically that black and white image, well, that, uh, that line drawing is basically the front there, right? And you can clearly see that those two stones and the one on the left, which is obviously not going to be on the one on the right, but the two there are not standing in there in the 1800s. So reconstruction of the past really changes perceptions and interpretations. So it's in the archaeology that we then turn to gleam a little time capsule of the past. And let's just go to here and when the archaeologists who excavated in there in 1919, 1920, 1921, it was likely that those stones that you've seen erected at the front had been re-erected. So they, the, the people excavating there um, 19, 19, 19, 20, 19, 21, were seeing something different and they excavated there in that chamber. Now, I've put that to, I've put that to bed, I've put that to rest, right? Because I, I needed to basically say to you, this image shows it all, right? And it clearly doesn't, that stone there doesn't really look big enough like the ones that have been reconstructed there. And again, we discussed this a great deal last week. And that stone there is clearly not that stone, which is that one there. So again, when, when we read the past to try to understand the past, we, we, we've sometimes got to think about what was there before the site was reconstructed. Now, the only thing that could be done, we mentioned Higgett, um, excavations in the early 1960s and some work of Whittle as well. And instead of concentrating on this area here, they concentrated on this. Now, one thing I, was, I missed out last week was a little image to try and say to you all that it's not all reconstruction, it's not all anti-archaeology, right? Because when the archaeologists were excavated there in the 1960s, they, they, were, they were given us a picture of undisturbed archaeology. So it's very brief, this bit today. So that there is where they excavated. And what we do have is a plan of the bones. Now, interestingly enough, uh, as, as we, we look at those bits of red there, excavated burial deposits under earthen mound at the back of Wayland Smithy that hadn't been excavated um, until the 1960s. Now, what we do have is two sets of archaeological remains, skeletal archaeological remains. And interestingly enough, we, we said that there's a sarsen pavement, the sarsen stone, 
which the rest of the site is constructed out of. This is phase one for the archaeology, right? Now, what, what, we, what we do find is that there is one area here which contained one set of archaeological remains, in fact, quite a lot of sets of archaeological remains on the right. And then between um, that red thing there and that red thing there was actually big timbers that supported a timber roof. So if we go on to this here, and if we put this side on, hang on a minute, uh, and we put that side on, hang on a minute, Oh, hang on a minute. Don't do that there. You can get an idea that in, in, in the thing that they actually call, a, hang on a minute, save, save. I don't know if that's somebody who just joined the class, but if it is, get them on. Right, it's just saving a minute. But you can clearly see that in an area that was built, if we go back, in an area that was actually built as a chamber, most of the bones were actually found out of the chamber, right? Before, before the tomb was constructed, right? So this is the interesting point. So this is actually in the chamber, which is on the sarsen um, stone floor. And this is, and that's, hang on a minute, playing up a bit today. Uh, nope, right. And uh, go away. And that there, Hang on. Oh, God, it's really playing up a minute. Hang on a minute. I think I've made a mistake. Right, hang on. Oh, oh, hang on. Edit. Revert. Revert to original. Right, yeah, you can clearly see all the bones. So lots of um, mangled and disarticulated bones. And one set of bones that is rather complete. And this is something that we, we were discussing was quite significant last week, that... They, they, they had constructed um, at an early stage at Whale and Smithy um, a chamber that was made out of timber, right? And then that was abandoned. And about 200 years goes by. And the time period that we're talking about is around 4,500 years ago. And what they then built was another chamber, which is actually at the front. So there was what we got. We got Whale and Smithy in two stages. The green stage that I've just described with human remains and the brown stage at the bottom that was the later site that they actually didn't find much in the way many human remains when they excavated that in 1919, 1921. But they found numbers of sets of human remains when they excavated that green area in the 1960s. So the other point back to the original, what I was talking about, is that you can clearly see here that, um, that this actually is another site plan, which actually clear, which clearly see, shows four stones in front, which aren't upright, but they're flat. So nobody can actually agree on the very nature of the archaeology of the site because it's been so mucked around with. That's why we've got to be very careful when we look at archaeology, and we've obviously got to be very careful in how we interpret the archaeology. Um, and you've really got to go with the original notes. Now, we, we mentioned about West Kennet Lombarrow last week and how it looks from outside and how that's been sort of pseudo reconstructed. You go to Stonehenge, lots of reconstruction. You go to the likes of you go to the likes of um, Avebury, lots of reconstruction. Now, the big question I've got for all of you today is that Castle Rig, how much of that has been reconstructed? And this is a question for our friend, uh, Peter. How much of, of the uh, men at all has been reconstructed, right? We've already done a talk on that. Lots of it has been reconstructed. So the other big question could be, maybe, maybe for Adam, to be fair, given every little bit of research here, um, is there any sites in Britain that have been excavated and you see them for what they are? that have seen no reconstruction? Really big question there. And so what we're gonna do now, that, that's opened the class today, right? And this is the image I wanted to show you of this site, which is in fact 
mice how. Now, you know, we, we, we do look at really interesting things on the internet, right? And some people can make up weird images and weird reconstructed drawings, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go look at the other image and we're going to look at all the slides that I've got, which I'd set up for, which, which I'd set up for last week's lecture, right? And then we're going to come back to this and we're going to come back to that, right? Now, this is, a, this, this is really interesting for me because I've never seen this image before, right? And you know what? Uh, I've, I tell people, I tell you guys and the ones on Monday evening and the ones on Wednesday twice to always question archaeology, right? And I, I've, I've gone with the fact that there was a closed roof on it. And, and every other site I've told you to look differently, right? Look away from how, what we're saying, right? And um, like, like, for example, when we looked at Mid Howe, we were doing the lecture and I said, what was the roof like? Was it, was it a stone roof, right? Was it open? No, it wasn't open because there were bones in there and it being eroded away. So it was a stone roof or maybe it was a timber roof, right? Maybe there were sods of earth on top of it. So I get to the Wednesday lecture and somebody said, I've actually got the report of the original excavations at Mid Howe in the 1930s. And it basically clearly said that there, that they removed stone lintels in the passageway, which may have been part of the roof. But by the time they removed the stone lintels, they, they didn't examine them to see if they were part of the roof, right? So that's a balls up in the archeology, span right? Now, bef be before I, be like, I could do my little bit on what I was gonna do last week with Mice Howe, right? And then I'm gonna come up with this problem, right? That I didn't really, question it right nobody's questioned it other than looking at this right so one one of the things that one of the things that we one of the things that we do at at um at mice how right you can see on the top of these os osoliths right on that side on that side right there's a pile of stone right has that been reconstructed that's about been put on the top of there so if we go back to that image can you clearly see that there's no stone on there and there's no stone on there? So therefore, if there's no stone on them, what were they holding, right? Now, forget that for a minute, right? And what we're gonna do is gonna go with the images that I was gonna show you last week. And I, I said to somebody, I said to somebody, I was talking to them today on the, I don't know who it was, right? I, I said to them, um, I'm actually a, more of a forensic archaeologist. And they said, you what? And I said, yeah, because because this is what we do. And then then I then I spoke to somebody who bought some eggs today. Right. And he said, he, he said, oh, um, I'm looking at the I, I'm, I'm looking at a TV program and it examines the princes in the tower and somebody's re-examining the deaths of the princes in the tower. And I said, with my forensic brain in archeology, span that it's quite possible to investigate the death of the princes in the tower in the late 1400s, right? By looking at clues that are not the usual clues. So people look at documents, right? A building that's been reconstructed, but there's other evidence out there anyway. So, yes, I don't know if it's on David's mind or I don't know if it's on Margaret's mind or I don't know if it's on anyone, on, or mice how, not again. But, um, but I think I, I wanted to mention mice how again because we mention it a lot. And I just wanted to sort of, I, I, I wanted to do some bullet points so that you've got lots more information. So when I mention mice how in the future at all, then you, you've got those bullet points more than me just like saying mice how, mice how, oh, that's mice how again. So there it is, mice how, the parish of Stennis, which is on the west part, 
of the Orcadian mainland, there's a home and a site of lots of ancient monuments. This is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And I have been to all of these with Pat. <laughs> not hand in hand, because we're not lovers. Uh, me, me and Pat, she joined my first trip to Orkney and we visited all these sites. And, it, and I gotta be honest with you, it, it was the best one out of all. Oh, except uh, when, when I went with Peter, that was good as well, Pete. I've digged myself a hole here. So, <laughs> so among, among these is the site of Mice How. There it is. It, 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 it's, it's a site that is very enigmatic. Lots of images on the internet. Now, I've blown my cover now that at the end I was going to talk about the reconstruction stuff. But let's talk gently about the information I've got in front of me first. So you can see there it's near it's near the lock, Lock Harry, right? And and Mice How would have been basically nowhere near water back when it was built. And Mice How itself is by far one of the most impressive mounds on Orkney. But it's by far not the only one that's relatively intact because there are other ones on Orkney that have been excavated on the Orkney Islands, Orkney Archipelago. But there might actually be mounds nearby. And actually, I'm going to tell you something as well. And also next week, we're going to be looking at the Ness of Brodgar as well with the update with the excavations. They're the Ring of Bruchen. They believe that there might be a mound near the Ring of Bruchen because there's two, there's two mounds there. And one might be very similar to Mice How. Anyway, moving on. Let's go back to where we were. Now, this itself is classed as a chambered khan. And, and the one thing that we will starkly say as a ditch around it, and we really don't have a pure date for the site's construction. We do at least know that the ring around this site, the ditch, we've got some episodes from the ditch, the ditch existed by around 4,700 years, years ago. But the mound itself and the standing stones that the mound contains, because they were, we know that there was a standing stone circle here, and then they demolished the standing stone circle, and then they built a chamber, and they built a mound over it. Now, one point I made last week was that I think lots of these sites, particularly the ones you can stand up in them, are very much like the way we see modern churches. We're the place to remember our ancestors. We're the place to maybe some, do some kind of ritual and little chambers around. Because it's in those chambers that we find the bodies, not the, not the main space, which is what this is. And if we, if we, we go back to these now, there's a central chamber. It looks like a crucifix shape. And if none of you noticed in the previous look at Wayland Smithy, you'll see that that was like an inverted crucifix as well. So when, when, when we look at that and we look at this plan and we look up, and this plan is, I believe, roughly from, I think, the 1860s or thereabouts. I don't have a date on it. You can clearly see when they, when they did the plan, you can clearly see there's a hole in the roof, right? So that is as it is, as they found it. And... The first major excavation that we were aware of, and obviously this, this has got to be from the 1860s now, sorry. Uh, this, the first major excavation there was that we, again, we know we're aware of. And um, 
And there's something that is in my mind, which I've got to tell you in a few moments. I should keep this, but I'm going to tell you in a few moments. It was excavated by a guy by the name of John, James Farrer, F-A-R-R-E-R, James Farrer, in 1861, prior to which the mound had distinctively a different shape than it has today. As you can see, it looks like a it looks like a, a donut, right? Now, I just realized something. And, and you know, when you, th this happens a lot when I do these lectures, as you know, I, said, I just realized something, or one of you guys has realized something. Remember the trees? Anyway, now, what, one, of, one, of the, one of the things that it says that they hardly found any human remains in the chamber, right? Yeah. So when they excavated it, this is how, hang on a minute, that's how they sketched it. And you can clearly see that's, that's more or less how it was found. Or was it? Now, forget about that's how it was found or was it, but they didn't find much in the way of artifacts there, right? Nobody says, nobody refers to there being a previous excavator, excavation before 1861. Right. And if there was a previous excavation before 1861, it would tell you why they found little in the way of artifacts in there. If it was open like this, that is a very interesting point. And you don't see that mentioned anywhere. Now. This itself, if we if, if we if we look. And we go back to this. And we see some of these architectural plans are really great. It, it looks like, I don't know, it looked like some kind of a huge lime kiln. It's definitely not a lime kiln, but you know what I mean. And and there is the plan. That that's that's what we're saying. That's what they're saying. It sort of looked like. And you know they excavated it and and, and they they saw this. Now, it it's got a diameter of around thirty meters now and and stood 11 meters high now that's quite chunky now forget those other images that we looked at to begin the lecture you know that weird reconstruction right that'll come into play so this car was taken into state care in 1910 at which time a concrete roof was added to the structure and directly underneath it was corbelled, right? So what we've got, hang on, we don't want to look at me. Or is it in the other slides? Hang on a minute, there. It, it basically, that's what the roof looks like, right? Now, I've never ever thought to, to question that roof. Basically, it, it's corbelled and then there's a concrete dome on it to protect it, right? Because there's, there's <sighs> runic carvings in there and there's all sorts of interesting things, right? I've never ever thought to question that. I've always thought, oh, that's a reconstruction. That's the way it always looked, right? But nowhere had anyone ever said that it was actually originally open, right? Nobody's ever said that, ever, anywhere, right? Anyway, carry on, carry on. Otherwise, I'm going to I'm going to lose my my footing. So, so at the same time, the outer mound was sculptured to give it its present rounded dimensions of seven point three meters high and a thirty seven meters diameter. So they're saying that it originally stood eleven meters high. Where did they get that from, right? And um, Maybe the answer is in that first image that I showed you tonight of this site. Anyway, so they're talking about, you know, the, the diameter, the 37 meters diameter of the mound, which is there, is actually more excessive than the original 30 meters that they actually said the diameter was in the first place, right? You're getting this. So if we, if we go to here, right, and we sort of look out, because as you come in along that passageway, you've got a chamber on the left, chamber in front, chamber on the right. Now, 
let's just let's just read this and try and bite my lip at the same time. A Neolithic elite. Mice how was built in the Neolithic period. Yeah, agreed. Constructed on a, le a platform of leveled ground. Agreed. Like the nearby stone circle of Brodga and Stenes, the monument is surrounded by a ditch and a raised bank. Now, the other thing to be said is that before this was constructed, um, it said that there was a stone circle here. And for four of these stones, which, which are several meters in length, were actually used in the construction of the passageway. Now, you know, long stones make a perfect passageway, and it's quite a long passageway, right? So if we go to that, and you can get an idea of the scale there. So the passageway, and it's saying um, you've got at least 25 feet of passage Right, and and some of some of the passageway, that's that's one of the stones on the side, on the roof base, and, and um, on the other side as well. So the passageway is 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 created out of these former standing stones, very similar to the ones at the Ring of Brodga and Stairness. Now, very odd, very very odd, that very recent archaeological work tells us that maybe. Maybe in re recent year, years, hints that the Khan was built on top of an earlier structure, perhaps an early Neolithic house. Right, which is very, very interesting. We don't often see that. Now, so in other words, what we've got is a house standing stone circle, this thing a mound and a ditch around the outside. So that's very, very interesting. So an, an excavation outside the chem chamber in 1996 led to the discovery of a socket hole on a platform to the rear of the mound. This added weight to the fact that this had originally been a stone circle monument. And these are obviously used to line the entranceway and had been part of a stone circle. So if we want to think about the chronology, right, it's going to be difficult, right? Maybe the site has been occupied for five and a half, six thousand years. We don't know. But the ditch around it was eventually constructed by around, as, as we've said, 4,700 years ago, the ditch around it. Now, the, this, this whole site... Is, is massively intriguing. And, and I think Pat's back problems have been due to the fact that she had to get on her hands and knees to crawl into this, right? <laughs> and interestingly enough, that's what we usually see. So if you, if you go to something like, something like Newgrange, you've got to crook over and sort of, you know, wander along here you've got to be on hands and knees but when you come from the outside inside you can stand you can jump up and down inside right in fact you could have several people standing on top of you inside it mm -hmm. sort of opens up into like a cathedral right and so again this site is extremely complex and with or without whatever you're putting on the roof right the the architecture is extremely complicated. The chamber's architecture is massively complicated. And the grandness of its scale has led to the idea that Mice How was built to demonstrate the power of a social elite within the prehistoric social system of the time. Now, do I, do I agree with that? No. And it's, it's almost as if when people write about these types of sites they, they they they've got to you know they, they they've got to find the king arthur in everything right and peter and peter and adam will know what i'm talking about you you've got to find you you've got to find the special people in society and everything radiates to the special people 
and it, you could only have special people using this mound. Well, tell you what, sorry about that, guys. You go to the um, you go to the island of Rousey. There's there's a there, there's I, I think I think the last estimate there's about twenty five uh, uh, Neolithic chambered monuments on the island of Rousey, right? And it's probably an island that would have supported 150 people, right? So if, and there's quite a number of bodies in each of these chambers. So that means that probably each chamber represents a family, right? Or maybe there were more people on the island, but you didn't build a cha you didn't build 25 chambers for 25 kings that represented quite a number of people over a long period of time. Were those kings women as well? Were those kings children? Were those kings babies? So why are we finding all these bones in these things? So, and they didn't find any, they didn't really find any bones in this at all. They found, they found, they found some evidence of bones, but not much at all. So again, thinking about this monument, trying to fit it in to a, a less biased narrative or unbiased narrative, depending on how you want me to look at this. Estimates for the labour required to build Mouse Howe have been placed at a whopping 100,000 man hours compared to the construction of 10,000 hours required for smaller monuments. So 100,000 man hours, right? Are they including movement of stone, which would have been um, maybe from if, if there if there was anything like a lock there, which which is probably unlikely. But if you're quarrying the stone from the side of a sea cliff or a lock, then it's easier. But if you if you have it to dig in the ground, you've obviously got to get the stone out. I know it's flat stone. But you're getting the stone out of the ground. Then you've got to move the stone, right? The the, the ditch around the outside isn't deep enough to actually have a, a, acquired the stone, and it's not going to be the right stone. Right, so a hundred thousand man hours to construct to complete this monument. So the problem is, people think that that constructing a monument like this, we're going to bring in the pyramids, folks. Sorry, uh, constructing a monument like this is 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 that you know people are forced to build it. You know, people people have to do this for you know, elite or, or aristocratic people in society. And I believe you get better results if you do it as a family group or you do it as a community. You get better results that way. I tell you what, we talk about reconstructions. Some of the best reconstructions, some of the best projects in Britain are projects where people work together. Second World War, remember that one? People worked together. Yeah, people, people went out to save people. Um, from Dunkirk, right? People work together. Amazing things can be done when people work together. We're not saving kings or gods or whatever, right? So, with that concept in mind, when when you think about when when you think about this type of monument, you 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 think about this being this could be created by a family that wants to build something because there's more than one of these. There's dozens and dozens, hundreds of these on mainland Orkney alone. And if you're thinking about, right, let, let's just do my fourth palace. You can, you can disagree with this. You can, you can shout at me. You can say I'm completely talking somewhere else, right? But, you know, you don't need to be a special person to build something like this, right? And if you've got all these burial chambers on Orkney that were for the elite in society, right, then there's a lot of them. There's a lot of elite people, right? There's like, there's like a mansion house in every few fields. That's what we're talking about, right? So, you know, my notes, my notes, then go on to something else, and it, uh, and, and 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 we 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 think sometimes about a great monument like this. And you think about how society develops on Orkney. Society on Orkney develops in a different way from Wiltshire, right? Wiltshire, it's open plain, right? You, you know, in, across England in the Neolithic period, 
but a Scotland excluding the islands and Wales, you've probably got a million people, right? So on Orkney, on, on Orkney, you you probably had um, in the in the lower thousands of people, right? So and there's and that's not going to be able to support, you know, aristocratic classes, right? And it's quite likely on Orkney that people work together for a very very long time without having an aristocratic elite. Is this sounding socialist or communist in what I'm trying to say? I'm actually talking practical. I'm actually talking about it, the pyramids. Pyramids. When, when you look about the pyramids, for years and years, we used to think that um, there, there were men in leather-clad uh, outfits, which are the men of Drina's dreams, um, like Idris. And these would be whipping people to move stones to construct the Great Pyramids. We found out that that's not the case anymore. The pyramids were done in the service of um, the, the pharaoh. People loved the pharaohs. So they did a little bit of work for the pharaohs for a year and went back to their families. That's what we found out. This isn't as brutal world as we think, right? It's not as brutal as we think. Now, when, when, when we looked at the bodies earlier on, and there's a link, when we looked at the bodies earlier on from Waylon Smithy, three of the sets of, I think it was 25 bodies that they excavated in the chamber at the back, um, three of them were actually had, had flints lodged in the arrangement of bones. There, there was damage caused by, you know, there, there'd been some something happened in the Neolithic period and this showed that there had been some kind of conflict, right? But that's very rare in the Neolithic period. I always talk down conflict in the Neolithic period and Bronze Age. Obviously, I don't talk down conflict in the Iron Age because there's more people. But conflict is overrated. It's like today. We don't see people going down our streets with mattocks, killing people, right? Now, I don't think then was the same. Uh, was any different. You know, people did, people, it, things were very, very different. And you can clearly see in this illustration that there's something something in the middle there. Is that a half? There you go. Now, this, this site itself, again, and for some of you who might want me to talk about this, right, there, there's the entrance, right? And if you want to get an orientation, right, um, there's north right so so north doesn't project directly down the chamber however perhaps one of mice house most famous attributes is its midwinter alignment something it shares with the chambered tombs of new Grangian island for a few days each year as the midwinter sun slips below the horizon its last rays shine directly through Mice House entrance chamber to illuminate the rear wall of the central chamber. And if you can see, the light would directly go into the cell. Have you noticed the word cell and not tomb? Right? Very, very interesting that. Would this have the same effect if they, if they, if, if they, it was an open roof? Well, yeah, let's 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 put a punt on that. Yeah, yeah. So again, looking at this site, right? And we we do we do go on to the Vikings in a moment. But we do we do we do. And this when again when we when we go back and we look at these really nice little images and we, we look at the landscape, there's Stennis on there. There it is, Stennis. The Stones of Stennis. Now, at the nearby Standing Stones of Stennis stand two angular slabs, standing side by side with a large prone stone beside them. Right now, prone, laying flat. Now, I haven't, I haven't got this to show you on my collection because I wasn't going to, because I was trying to fit this in last week. But as we've got a tiny little bit more time, we're going to go to Stennis, right? 
And I'm going to show you two little facts with Stennis. So if we type yeah. in Stennis. And um, do you know what? I, I've been I, I've been studying my sheep a lot recently, right? And um, and I wanted to, to look at the the island that my my Borrowray sheep come from, which is near St Kilda, and um, and they've actually started finding Neolithic pottery on St Kilda, which is one of the far off islands of the British Isles. Just wanted to chuck that in there, so me and my sheep could be a lot older um, in lineage. Than meets the eye. Now, what what we what we've got is is we've got. Hang on a minute. Hang on. A minute. I wonder if I got the alignment of. Um, if I type in there mice how. Um, if we type in mice how alignment. And if you start hearing strange noises, it's because the turkey's asleep. There you go. And there. And you see that? It's aligned. Right. Can you see that mound there? That is the mound of mice how that we've just been talking about, right? But there's one problem. We know that my we know that the ring of Stennis has always seen extensive reconstruction. Obviously, the prone stone there. We do believe that that stone has fallen off from a bigger stone. It is intriguing, although perhaps mere conject co coincidence, that when viewed from the centre of the stone circle, mice how is aligned to the gap between the two these two stones. This could indicate that the stones formed some sort of symbolic link or connected portal between the chambered khan and the stone circle. But then again, Stennis didn't really always look like that. Unfortunately, what, what we've got, we, we're left with a past that's in some ways been reconstructed to align, that's not a pun, to align the past in how we wish to perceive it. So if we, if we go again, and the, and the other point I want to, there you go. It says there it aligns, all that. Okay, there, there it is. Sort of the alignment, it's not as good as the other one, is it? So one thing, if we look at, oh, hang on a minute. No, right. Can you see the standing stones at Stennis, right? My, my, my link with Stennis is those stones. The stones used at the mice how were like that, were upright like that, with, with an angle, right? And instead of talking about phalluses and sex and all that type of stuff, let's look more practically and think that those standing stones may each represent a family as part of a stone circle landscape. Finally, looking at mice how this little bit and then we'll do a little bit more of mice how and then we're going to take a break right and strangely enough i let my i left my little ancient borrow ray sheep out last night and uh, she was fine I, I fell asleep i didn't get her in if we go back to the images and there oh okay now Oh, well, let's, let's try and, okay, there it is. You've got that little way in there, there. And on the left, that stone on the left there, that upright stone, and over to here, into that cell, they actually found carvings, and there's lots of other carvings at the site as well. Didn't really want to do this, but on that reconstruction, you can see lots of carvings. There you go. Lots of carvings on that stone there from the, not the reconstruction, the, the, the line drawing from the 1860s. So during the 18, 1861 excavation, Mice Howe's entrance was inaccessible to an access shaft was driven um, down through the top of the mound. Once, and how much damage that did. Moving on. 
However, the archaeologists discovered that they were not the first to break into the tomb. Maybe somebody broke into it a few years earlier. But what they're saying that actually the people who'd actually broken into the tomb were actually Vikings because there's runic graffiti found on the inner walls. And this is um, this this site is mentioned in the Orcadian saga of the 1200s as a site known as the Orkhark, the Orkhark, um, the, the, the Orcadian mound, Orkhad, Orkhark. Um, so th this, um, and it, that confirmed in the Orkhark was actually entered, and it was mentioned in the Orcadian saga. It was entered by Vikings. We know that that's fact because the, the, the Vikings are left their runic marks in there. Again, that is absolutely amazing. And one little fact is that on some of the other stones, we find these, which are Neolithic. There are Neolithic carvings there as well. Nobody really talks about them. And there's some shapes. This is for you guys to look at. There's some weird symbols and shapes and forms that make up the, the Neolithic carvings that some say might indicate an early form of writing. There wasn't any writing in the Neolithic period. They didn't keep records. Keep an open mind, folks, always. And we have discussed this a lot. Earlier writing predating the Romans. Because as we do know, Adam and Peter, Adam and Peter know I'm talking about, the Romans did everything, didn't they? They, they built roads, they, they, they built the first settlements, they built everything, didn't they? And now we're starting to see that they didn't. They didn't build the first roads. Uh, there were roads here before the Romans. They didn't build the first settlements. There were settlements before the Romans, and so on and so on. So why couldn't there have been writing before the Romans, which dates back even longer than we could ever dream? No, we haven't finished yet. So what, what I'd like to do finally, before we, we have a break, um, and for some absolute reason, I feel absolute knackered today, but we, we are going to have a break and I'm going to, I'm going to put little baby Baldrick to bed, right? Or, oh, you want to say all. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. I, I, it sounds so much better when you say it. And, <laughs> and let's go to... Right, you know, um, just quickly, I, I was just talking about those those bodies earlier on, and you know, some of those that there's actually flints. There's three flints in the sets of those remains, um, and that's from Wayland Smithy. So what we what we do now, we've got that. That's next. We've got this. We can clearly see that the roof. We know the roof has been reconstructed, and you know when they talk about entering the mound in 1861, right? What are they? Are they? Are they going through soil? Are they going through stone? What are they actually entering? You know, and, and you've got all those questions, right? So then you know that that the you know that above these ultraliths, and there's there's four of them inside in the corners, right? Um, if we go back, there's nothing on top, right? You can see there above there that, that basically on the on the reconstruction, right? Um, it shows that they've piled up stones in a reconstruction that go to the roof, right? But there's a space. There's actually a space there, but they've actually reconstructed it to the roof, right? In the rebuild, right? The 1920s rebuild, right? So if we if we go off that, and we do that, and we stop that, and we go that. Now, I, I know I know one or two of you might be thinking I'm smoking the green stuff, right? And I'm thinking pixies and things that go bump in the night that there, there's if you've got a half in the middle or indications of a half right um and just sort of move move up a little bit it looks that that, that bit looks a bit silly um but if you if you if you think about this there's something resting on these these posts what are these posts about well remove these posts right but when when you think about it right why can this have been open to the elements why not Right. 
whenever we rebuild these sites and we reconstruct them, we always seal in the roofs. And as, as we know at Bar Clothier de Garas on, on Anglesey, when they built a concrete dome on it, <clears throat> the carvings that they, that they enclosed are now starting to de decay, right? And the, the, the mound's only been there a few decades, right? The concrete mound, right? They survived without having a mound on top of it. And now they're starting to decay and erode, right? So, so the, the, the point is, right, that um, why can this set up add an open roof? Why why do we and, and when when we when we look at, for example, the um, the giant's grave on the Gower, right? You can see some reconstructions. They got this massive capstone on it, right? And 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 actually, and actually, if there was a capstone on it, you wouldn't have even been able to get in there because it was so down on the ground. You'd have had to crawl in there, dragging your your auntie's bones behind you to put them in the chambers, right? So. So now we're working out that it was that it was an open site, right? And and we're and maybe what we can start to think is that when we think about roofs, maybe there could be something else going on. It's not all about roofs, right? It's not all about enclosing space. And there is one other thing about the Neolithic period before we go on to questions. When somebody died. They, they did something called sky burial, as I keep saying, right? So the body was laid outside and the birds pecked away at your flesh and other animals ran away with things and things that go bump in the night. And the <clears> bones <throat> were then collected together and put into a chamber, right? Or they were carried around in a, in a cloth bag, right? Um, but that's bodies were being exposed in the light the the darkness even though we've got a dark world a scar scarabray you know got the dark world you know and so on right but it, shelter and so on these people like the light as well so by thinking it's all about darkness might be the wrong way of looking at the neolithic period it's i call it the neolithic revolution not because of agriculture because people have very much changed, right? People are building these huge monuments. People are organizing themselves. That's what the that's where the real that's where the revolution lies in. Change, massive change. Agriculture is already there before the Neolithic period comes in. On that note, we're we're gonna we're gonna take a break. So after the break, we we've got two sites I want to look at and we're going to we're going to read the blurb about um, the, the Isle of Arran and we're going to look at this site on the Isle of Wight so what I'd like to do now is I would like to ask is there any questions and we might be finishing a little bit earlier tonight I promise that every week we might just this week be finishing it a more reasonable time that means Pat you can get to bed <laughs> good so we're talking about darkness. Um, I'm going to leave now, if you don't mind. I do apologise, oh, but you, I've had, you, I had a very bad night's sleep and I've, I'm just falling asleep here trying to listen. Anne, uh, Anne, I'll Anne, see Anne, you next week. Anne, don't apologise. It's an absolute pleasure to have you along tonight and hopefully see you next week. Okay. I'll see you next week, yes. Bye, Anne. Bye. Bye-bye, Anne. Bye-bye. Good night, Anne. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Look after yourself. Should have said that before. Look after yourself. Yeah, she, she can get very tired some nights, Aran. So, right. Okay. So, David, anything you'd like to say before we have a break? No, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, who's next? Uh, Peter. Anything you'd like to say? Which one? Oh, my God. This again. God. The one who, the one who opens their mouth first, you, Peter. All right. Um, am I right in saying that um, the um, the builders in uh, Orkney have an advantage as to how the stone splits off naturally into nice flat pieces? Is that right? Well, I, I thought well, I heard this before, uh, but I, I, I just wanted to check it. Right. Right. Actually, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go sideways. 
right well, that that's 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 the obvious that is obvious right it's yeah. just it's just too obvious uh, it, 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 practically it's great it, it, it you know it, it's it, it, it's practically it's great right um there there are these stones you can build easily with but you you've yeah. also got on some of the um the 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 quartz nith stones on the likes of the Isle of Lewis um you know that there, there's bedded stones there not as good as the likes of the likes of Orkney but if you want to go to places like mid wales you've got mm. slate you know that yeah, yeah. that sort of there um when you go to and and the the red herring with all this is that when you go to the Marlborough Downs, the stone used for Stonehenge is readily accessible on the Marlborough Downs. You've got mm. the Sarsen stones. Yeah. Forget about the blue stones. We've already had that yeah. lecture. There's not many blue stones anyway, right? You're not going to build a whole town out of blue stones. They're special, wherever they come from, right? So the idea that the idea that Orkney's got all this stone gives them an advantage. Is a little bit of a red herring. That the the other the other point as well is what uh, one thing that's actually shocked the world of archaeology, Peter, which we'll be doing next week, is that they used to they, they, they used to say up until a few weeks ago that Orkney <laughs> used stone on, in buildings because there were very few trees there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the other thing. Yeah. We're now finding at the Nessa Brodga, they're actually standing to find tree, tree stumps. They're planks. They're fi- yeah. At the Nessa Brodga, they're finding bloody timber. I was so excited. I actually nearly physically wet myself because I, I love being wrong, but not as wrong as this. Yeah. Right. Um, Do, so it's it, Is it imported? Do they know yet? What, the, the wood? Yeah. I or are they know. like Stop in it. situ stumps? Stop it. No, they're not in situ stumps. They're actually timber that's actually Timbers, being worked right, okay. and planks. It's planks. Right. It's, okay. it's planks. It's not tree stumps. It's planks. Sorry. I even, that's even more of a revelation. Right. Yeah. So we've got those two issues, right? Let's go to the third point, right? They, they, um, so obviously they don't necessarily need to build in stone, right? Because there is timber available, right? Mm. So um, it, it's, I, I I believe this, right? Let, let's just move the ball to Shetland, right? You've got you've got conical shaped towers on Shetland, right? The 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 Brock of Mouser that I was so lucky to stay. Um, that I stayed at a house which had the Brock of Mouser overlooking it, and then we went on a ferry and we went over to the Brock of Mouser, and we actually went to the top of the Brock of Mouser, right? There, and some of these were 15 metres tall. The Brock of Mouser's, Mouser's 12, right? Why did you need to build anything so tall? You don't need to, you don't need to do any of this stuff, right? Mm. You don't need to build a tower that's 15 metres tall, right? Why didn't you just do Scarabray? So, they had an opportunity to build in stone. Their technology was far more advanced than anywhere else in the British Isles. That's the reason why they built out of stone. Mm. Give them the credit local where geology did. leads to that. Where the local geology is mostly sedimentary, and the actual rocks is laid in layers. Those layers then form uh, slabs that can be used for building. Peter, uh, much Peter, more we... easily than uh, rocks like granite or things like that. The <clears throat> sedimentary rocks, which has been laid in layers, already form these 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 slab-like rocks. Peter, we agree with all that. We completely agree with all that. But but the, we, we uh, Peter, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. But the t- the two points I've just made, right? Um, you don't necessarily need to build out a stone. That's the first point. Um, you've got loads of stone around. You can use the stone. But the, the other point as well is they're building monuments that are much bigger than anywhere else in the United Kingdom, Peter. Why bother? Mm-hmm. Do you see the... Uh, P- Peter Sampson, do you see the point I'm trying to make? Yeah. I, I agree with you. I, 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 I'm I, not disagreeing with that at all. You've been to Orkney with me, and I've been to yeah. Orkney a few times. That's completely the point, right? But they go off the scale in building. That's because the elite lived there. Oh, shut up! <laughs> right, so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to shoot, shout anyone down. What I'm trying to say 
it, it's oh, actually what you're trying to say. The gods live there, and they built. Yeah, they were gods. No. They built. No, the, the it wasn't it the capital of Britain. Oh my God, you've gone somewhere else. No, the Orkneys were the capital of Britain back then. So, and, and, so the elite would have been there that organised everything. Oh come on! There was uh, the train service was so bad back then, uh, <laughs> Margaret. They they it would take them years to get to South Wales. Well, they travelled by boat. They were, they were boat people. Or, or Astro Lift, if you remember um, that thing from the 1980s. <laughs> I'm just right, wondering, um, you know, the four obelisks in yeah, South Bay's How Could they yeah. possibly have been a platform, an accessible platform balanced on top of them? Right, OK. okay if you said okay. planks of wood have been found... Right, that's at the Nessa Brodga. The Nessa Brodga is in, within a kilometre away, so the wood would have been available here as well. So I, I don't really understand. But have we finished with you, Peter? Um, England? Yeah, good. Yes, uh, thank you. Oh, right, which isn't in England. Um, Margaret, I want to know what you're talking about, because I'm struggling on, on this one. The four obelisks, the stone obelisks inside May's Howe. Yeah. They, they all come to the same height, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And you were saying you think it might have been open at the top, but wouldn't that have let all the, the elements in, or the rain? Ah, right. I thought you meant the ones that were used to create to create mm. the, um, the, the the stone circle that was around. Yeah, which was originally there. So those four in there are different, right? Those four oh. that are actually in the main chamber are different, right? Um, yes, elements would have been, elements would have come in, but the the, the three chambers on either, either side of, of, you know, they were enclosed anyway, right? And I'm not, act, Margaret, I'm not saying agree with me. I'm just giving you a different perspective. Right? Well, where did you think the half was? Did you say it looked like there might be a half? That smack, smack bang in the middle of, of, of the chamber of mice house. Well, it would, if, if it was open, it would have put the fire out, wouldn't it? <laughs> But where would the smoke have gone? <laughs> yeah, but you wouldn't have a half underneath yeah. an open roof, would you? Actually, Margaret, what we're doing, you're, you're being very practical, which I completely agree with, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all, also, the other angle is that it may have had a timber roof. Well, that's what I just said. Oh, <laughs> right, it's OK, then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I said a platform, some kind oh, of to support, platform. To, su to support a timber roof. Hence, that's why they. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes complete <laughs> sense. Well, Margaret, good. We got oh. there eventually. Thank you very much. I got there eventually. You knew what you were talking about, and everyone else did, but I didn't. Right, well done, there, Margaret. Anything else you want to say, Margaret? Lots of things, but I'll shut up for now. Oh, go on, say something else, Margaret. I'm the one who's in Paris myself. Go on. No, no, let somebody else talk. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll do Adam and then go on. Adam? When he's um, asked us if we could think of any monuments that hadn't been rebuilt, I immediately thought of um, Shapstone Circle. Oh, Shap, Shapstone Circle, Shap, Shap. I, 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 I know where that is. Remind me again. It's up in Cumbria. Oh, the avenue. Oh, right. Yeah, we did. We we look. Yeah, of course we did. Of course we did. We did Shapstone Circle. Of course we did. Yes. We did it a little while ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that was a bit of a mess when they when they found it, though, wasn't it? You know, it, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Um. So, ah, right. I see what you mean. The Shapstone Circle hasn't been reconstructed because it is in the poor state that it is. Yes, you are right. I remember it. Um. That's a really good point. So therefore we go sideways, Adam, and we say we say that if a site looks a mess, has it been reconstructed? That's what I was thinking. That is a that is a good point. Yeah, we're gonna leave that one there. Thank you there, Adam. Right, okay then. Um any any other sites, Adam? Just keep coming up with them. Um okay. uh, that Pat, anything you'd like to say? No, oh, no, thank you. Yeah, Pat, can I ask why why you're surrounded by boxes again? Are you moving house? <laughs> well, the computer room is going to get painted. Ah. So we took everything out of that room and into this 
bedroom. <laughs> All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to see oh, you. Well. Thanks, <laughs> <I'll be back. laughs> So we've done everybody other than Drina, and we'll just come back to Margaret with one last missive, and then we're having a break. <laughs> right, uh, Drina. Did Brock's have roofs? Oh my God. Um, I was hoping to avoid if that discussion. If they've got fire with an open roof, it's not going to be much use, is it? Right, okay. Um, that's <laughs> the problem. When, when That is the problem, right. Um, when... Let, let's just have a look at a Brock a minute. And, and this ties in with something that Margaret was saying. And because Brock, some people argue that Brock were open. Therefore, that ties us directly in with, you know, that point about maybe my tower was open. And, you know, anyway, carry on. So what we're going to do, we're going to type in, um, uh, if I can spell Mouser Broch. Oh, there it is straight away. Um, Mouser Broch, we're going to type in. Um, oh, we, 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 you can't swim to it, mate. Um, you need to get a ferry. Mouser Brock reconstruction. Recon Rex. <laughs> right, reconstruction image. <clears throat> I, I I hope our um I hope our oh wonderful um Anne is okay. Right now, okay, this actually shows the Brock at Mouser with a roof on it, right? Which is fine. Right? With that actually shows it with a roof on, right? But smack bang in the middle of the Brocha Mausa is a fireplace, right? Which is really odd because the, 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 the smoke must obviously exit through the walls, right? So if we look at uh, other reconstructions of Brochs, some people argue that Brochs were open plan, right? Hopefully, everybody hasn't changed that idea. It looks like they... Um, that that is <coughs> bingo. <coughs> a Scottish broth without a roof. So obviously, when it when it wasn't raining, right, which was probably ninety percent of the time, <laughs> when it wasn't raining in this part of Scotland, the rain would actually gush into the building, right? Um, and um, oh God, I've remembered the word. This escapement layer, right? Basically, what, what you occasionally find in these buildings um, is actually um, like, like a little sort of ledge like this, which then supported a roof. We don't see that in all of them. But even with that, the water's going to come in and it's going to flood the building anyway, right? So the Brocks are really complicated structures. Or you want to go with um, the Brocha Musa that has the scatment layer, right? Stop. Right. Um, something like that, which puts the roof line further up. <clears throat> right. And these buildings were actually built in the um, Iron Age. But you can clearly see if you've got a roof like that, the water is just going to flood down the walls. So you've got to you've got to be very careful when you're looking at these sites. That is a more practical reconstruction for a broch. Right, it's quite homely, it's tower like, and usually these have got villages around them. Oh, my dearie me, all oh, fiddlesticks. You know the questions along the bloody lectures some weeks, right? Okay, quickly, Margaret, anything you'd like to say quickly? Because, um, I've got to put little baby turkey to bed, and it's your fault that he's not in no, bed. No. Yet, so, no, I'll go and make you a cool. All right, then we're gonna yeah, make a couple. Yeah. Uh, all right, then, okay, while well, I get a well, I'm, we're gonna take a um, it's now 9.08 uh, and we're going to take a break until 9.20. So we, we, we'll, be, we'll see you then. Speak to you then. Matt, uh, Matt you've got to stay on because you've got another 10 minutes. <laughs>
Oh, hasn't it been hot today, David? Very hot, yeah. Yeah. I think it got hotter as the day went on. <clears throat> Did you come into arms site today? No, <clears throat> yesterday. Yesterday. Mm. I was going to ask Peter for an address to send a card for Sandra. Uh, if I get a card, I can get uh, at least us in on site to sign it and send it off. Would that be all right with you, Drina? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you chatted to her for ages when we were at Hadrian's Wall, didn't you? I did, yes. You got yeah. to know her quite well. Yeah, she was lovely. She, she was really nice, yeah. Person. And she'd been to so many places. She'd been. And I remembered it all as well, which I know. All never... over the world, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so at least she, <coughs> at least she did that. She saw yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, here he is. Oh, now he's gone again. <laughs> now you see him, now you don't. <laughs> are you working your way through the library? Yes. <laughs> you are. <laughs> You know, you can co just come any time and help yourself. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> and David, if you're in Armside, just come up. If you what? want some good reading, I've got hundreds of books in the garage. Oh, yeah. They're not mine. They belong to the group. <clears throat> Peter. Peter. Can you hear me, Peter? Peter Samson. He's on mute. Oh. Yeah, I go. can hear you. I just wondered if you had an address that... Um, I, I don't, uh, but I will look at it. I will try and find it shortly, yeah. Yeah, just so we, we can send a card from all of us from yeah, the outside okay. group. Uh. We're all dropping like flies, aren't we? Wondering yep. who's going to be next. <laughs> I think we could do with some younger members. <laughs> <laughs> do you, you know Joyce, don't you, Drina? My neighbour. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. She's just been on a holiday to the Hebrides. Oh, wow. And wow. Uh, she went on a Bibby's coach trip. Really? I yes. didn't know that. Yeah, just went off by herself, which she oh. wouldn't have done. The no. And she's brought me a newspaper back. 
Oh, wow. With, um, she said there's a bit of archaeological news, so I thought you might be interested. Gosh. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell Carl when he comes back. It's about new discoveries on Lewis Cranog. Oh, right. Wow. Mm. I didn't know yeah, Vivi. She had a that. lovely time. She said the weather was yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah. Really, really good. She was very lucky. Please, Bora, that's great. Yeah, she really enjoyed it. I think if I didn't have the dog, I would probably do something like that. Yeah. Go on yeah. one up to Orkney, maybe. Yes. Or the Hebrides. Sounds good. Yeah. Because it doesn't look as if the group's going to have any more adventures, does it? No, it doesn't. No. Uh, Unless we do it. Unless we do it, yeah. Yeah. But I'm tied with the dog. Can't go anywhere, really. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Carl's talking about Orkney, but you need to be there to see it all, don't you, really? Yeah. It's not the same when you're just looking at pictures. You no, need it's to... not. no, it's not at all, no, no. Oh. You've been, haven't you, David? Yes, yeah, a couple of times, yeah. 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 Did you go to May's How? No. Oh. I did. <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> Went there on my own as well, without Carl. Wow. Right. Oh, you had a camper van, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I wish you still had, and then you could take us. <laughs> <laughs> you could be our guide. I just wondered, you know, this, the Scottish clearances, when they got rid of all the crofters yeah. that lived there and moved sheep in, did that happen on Orkney as well, or was it just on, just on mainland Scotland? Hmm. I don't know. No. Hmm. <clears throat> I'll have to ask Carl, perhaps Carl might know. Yeah. <clears throat> Orkney is a place certainly worth visiting, yes. Yeah. There is so much there. I, I, I got to answer loads of questions. I, I was listening to them all. Right, first of all about the clearances. There, there we, when we went to the island of Rousey, the one that we did the other week, uh, where, the, where there's mid the the uh, the lady Judy uh, Julie Gibson is a county archaeologist. She she basically said that there was clearances in the latter part of the 1800s. Mm. I'm not sure when it was. I think it must have been in the 1860s or something. It was quite late, right? And basically, people refused to leave the island. So he basically said, "Okay, then um, all the lowland areas are mine, right? You're getting out your houses. You can live in the hills, and that's where they lived. They they lived." in the top bits um, on the island of Rousey that that and not some of them some of them left but the, the what we're finding with the clearances mm. it, there, there's I, I've done a lecture on this years ago there's evidence that um, the clearances didn't just clear poor people it, it cleared people who actually had who, who were wealthy as well, well they, they weren't all they weren't all poor people that was cleared in the, in the clearances. It, 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 obviously, if somebody was richer than you, you're out of your house. That was basically it. If but you were tied to the land, then you're out of your house. So clearances, uh, and obviously when we look at Ireland, you, you, you look at clearances rather late. Clearances, the, the, you could look at the potato famines of the, the, the middle part of the, the 1800s in Ireland as a form of clearance. Yeah. Because they... they in, it, most people don't know that when when you think right this, this is quite a, a racist uh, way people used to think that the only thing that people ate in Ireland was potatoes right and and they they that's all they ate but 
Um, one of the chief exports of Ireland was actually grain, right? Uh, the poor people ate potatoes, right? The people who didn't have much money ate potatoes. The people who worked the, the land that was growing the grain, they ate the potatoes and not the grain. So people were starving to death in Ireland because they weren't allowed to eat the grain. <laughs> Mm. And, and that meant that millions, not thousands, um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm probably right in what I'm going to say. There are less people living in Ireland now than there were in the, the time of the clearances in Ireland. A lot mm. went to America, didn't they? Um, mm. All these places. Yes. Yes, they did. Yeah. Right. Mm. So that's the first question. Um, the other thing as well is when when everything settled here, right? Um, there, there. I've got something in the back of my mind to do some kind of excursion, right? But I'm not going to tell oh. you yet, oh. right? Um, so the other thing is, well, this is all about Margaret and me today. You, the rest of you, you could just sit down and this is the Margaret and um, Carl oh, show. Sorry. Margaret, you, you did want to tell me something. What was that? Uh, well, a neighbour of mine has just been on a trip to um, the Hebrides. And she brought, she said, uh, I brought you a newspaper to look at because there's a bit of archaeological news in it. Uh, and it's about new, disc new discoveries on a Lewis Cranog. Uh, an archaeological team have made new discoveries during their summer excavation of a Neolithic island in a Lewis Loch, uh, proving that human beings were working on the island up to 5,400 years ago. And um, they found a clearly man-made artifact surrounded by hazelnuts in a layer which includes Neolithic wooden pieces of pottery. And the stones which made the island itself were definitely placed there. They couldn't have been washed up there or moved by glaciers because they're on top of wood and there are human-made artifacts underneath the stones. Hmm. The dig ended late in July. Uh, they've taken loads of samples for analysis, which includes sedimentary material from the lock bottom. Or, uh, as they call oh. them in Ireland, a cranog. Cranog. Sorry, did you say a date, Margaret? Did they Cranog. have a date? Well, when it was made, ah. Yeah. Excavations have taken them down through almost 2,000 years of prehistory, with finds dating the island to a period which spans the Neolithic age from 3,400 BC to 1,400 BC. <clears throat> Cranogs predominantly in archaeology um, are Iron Age or early medieval, but you can get early ones, as mm. Margaret mentioned. So uh, Cranog. Um, C R A N N O C in the Irish or Cranog in in Welsh. Mm. Uh, and we, we we there's been there, there's very few Cranogs in England. There's lots in Ireland. <clears throat> you in Wales? We've got a Cranog. We've got a very early Cranog that was discovered in Monmouthshire by my good old friend Stephen Clark a few years ago, and uh, that that was a very early prehistoric one. The the one uh, that I passed to go and see my children um, at. Plan Gorse Cranog, that was the famous one, which is about 1,500 odd years ago. But we got lots of Cranogs in Scotland and Ireland, so they're varying dates. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You've talked about clearances, right? Yeah. There's a point here. Hang on a minute, right? Um, me and um, me and uh, Pat were looking at each other, shaking our heads, saying we can't see it, right? Julie was Julie was saying over there in in the boggy area, right? Um, uh, the, these people that were cleared from the land built a little sort of cranog in the middle of like a boggy lake area, and yeah, cranogs have been built in in more recent times. So yeah, that was on the island of Rousey as well. <clears throat> right. Ah. Well, so, I heard that they they were trying to break break. I, I presume it was the English the dastardly English clearing them off the land. And I think it was to break up the clans, that clan system. Well, I, actually, do you want me to come in on this one, right? Um, the, the English are blamed for everything. Well, they should be, but um, it, it actually, and, and the English should be blamed for 
uh, the, um, and all the terrible things happening in Scotland. But the fact of the matter is, uh, the Jacobite Rebellion um, of 1745-1746 involved as many Scotsmen on the royal side, on the English side, as actually fought for Bonnie Prince Charlie. The other point as well is, 90% um, of all the people involved in the clearances in Scotland were Scottish lineage. It was the uh -huh. Scottish landlords that were clearing the people, not the English, right? And uh -huh. in Ireland, exactly the same. It was the uh -huh. Irish aristocracy that was making money out of the people in Ireland, clearing people and responsible for the famine. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the English. So, so you know, well, what... what yeah, so, okay, I want to blame the English for everything, right? <laughs> Including the fact that um, I haven't any had any acting work for, for ages. But the fact of the matter is we can't blame them historically for everything. It's like blaming the English for slavery. And we think, well, you know, oh. lo loads of people did slavery. Yeah. So clearances are... are um, uh, entwined in the in the pain of the Irish and the Scots, because it involved as many Scots on both sides and the Irish on both sides, um, and the blame is to be I get on this one. The Irish should have been to blame for the clearances, and so are the Scots in most cases. <clears throat> mm. Oh God, did I actually just say that? I should be burnt at the stake. I actually <laughs> defended English people. Sorry, Pete. <laughs> Uh, right. Can I can I just say one other thing? Uh, we, we're doing we're doing too much now. Um, but um, right. OK. Um, two points. You should all have in the post in the next day or so a plan which you need in next week's lecture. Um, it's the it's the Nessa Brodga plan that I need to ha you to have in front of you next week as we're doing a lecture, because I'm going to be saying, that's in room 21, that's in room 15, that's in room 10. That goes around, and if you haven't got a plan, next week's lecture isn't going to work. So Rona's, Rona's just sent you a plan each, right? Ooh. And if you don't get it in the next couple of days, you're going to have to get in contact with me urgently. Uh, but you should all have a plan. And the other, talking about, talking about site plans as well, right? Um... I mentioned about a fireplace in the middle of Mice How. There's there's mm -hmm. there's no real archaeological evidence for a fireplace in the middle of Mice How, right? But one of the stones smack bang in the middle of it, a big massive stone. You know, you could think that that may have been used. But this idea of a fireplace and the and theories that that thing about an open roof, Margaret, is very theory based. There's no real fact to it. But then again, it could be argued of what was actually on the roof. That's what we're going to think about. What was on the roof? Was it timber or was it stone? And and in the background, was it open? There you go. And Sorry, finally, Carl. Yeah. Did, did you say oh. they found? Did you say they found the remains of a Neolithic house there as well? There, there's ever they're, they're now in more, more recent times finding the remains of a Neolithic <clears throat> house, which would be underneath uh, the the uh, mice house, which would indicate an earlier fireplace. So, I was going to say there could be a half yeah. there. Then I'm sorry, yeah, I'm sorry yeah. there. But the thing is, it'd be very difficult to date that because is yeah. it later, is it earlier, whatever. So I'm not going to say, Peter. Oh yeah, there is a fireplace there, and then confuse mm. your pants off what it was used for. Uh, one, one, one second, one second. Hi, uh, I'm actually teaching at this minute, so I'm going to have to phone you back in twenty minutes. Okay, speak to you then. Love you. Bye. 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 -bye. Right, sorry about that, folks. Um, right, the other thing I'd, I'd like to say, right, um, it's not about that interruption. You know, I should switch it off. I'd like to say the other thing as well is, um, if you get Pete's address, right, um, um, then you could send it to him. And then by the time Pete gets the address, he could just take it over by himself. Sorry, Pete, you've got to have some exercise. <laughs> Yeah, that would be the better idea to send it to Pete. Sorry, mm. Pete. Okay. Yeah, Somewhere. fine. Right, good. So what I want us to do now, <clears throat> um, I, I've got to crack on with 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 the rest of the lecture and and sort of get on with that. And uh, um, and hopefully you all enjoyed getting the illicit pillar. And uh, the next one's going to be going to be even better. So before before we actually before we actually get on to, I, I've got a little bit of news of the week actually and uh, it, it goes it goes as follows 
It says, a, a recent study shows that the advent of the Neolithic era, right? I know nobody can see me, so let's get that off you. I know you want to see me, so um, mm -hmm. background, none. Right, there you go. So here we go, reading this. <laughs> so a recent study shows that the advent of the Neolithic period, era in North Africa was influenced by a blend of African hunter-gatherers, European farmers, um, and Near Eastern pastoralists. This uh, complex interplay of cultures between approximately 7,500 and 6,500 years ago, uh, resulted in shared knowledge, cultural shifts, and intertwined genetics. Now, you know, it, it's, what we're trying to say is that people are moving around. They're, they're going into Africa. They're actually going from Africa over here. They're going from Asia into Africa. They're going from Asia into Europe. People are going likewise, right? So it's, it's a mix. Nothing is fixed cultural shifts of ideas communicating and so on so lifestyles people's ideas move everything changed for years researchers have sought to understand the transition um, from humanity's hunter-gatherer roots to agriculture and livestock practices what triggered off the neolithic revolution i don't use the neolithic revolution in that way um, agriculture is already here when, when you know, when, when we go into the Neolithic period in, in Britain 8,000 years ago. That's the date I use. But our revolution is those buildings that we're talking about on Orkney, which is the Orkney Neolithic revolution. Look it up. But, um, you know, this, this, this thing about, this thing about um, we don't always have to move away from hunter-gathering. We can survive as hunter-gatherers. The Japanese cultures survived beyond, um, you know, hunter-gathering. They were able to build houses, but they still hunter-gathered. They didn't need rice. They didn't need crops. There was plenty in their bushes. There was plenty for them to collect. So you don't always need to move from hunter-gatherer to be in the modern age. But what, you, what you've got to see is history is a mix, a pantheon of ideas. And sometimes those pantheon of ideas can be in one locality. When we look at the amazing nature of the archaeology on Easter Island, Easter Island, when we look at it, they were able to have an advanced culture and do all these things without Western interference. They just were able to determine their future. So you don't, again, all history is a mix match, a change. There's no real ideas. There's no real solutions. But in the Neolithic period, things change massively. Whatever way you want to look at it, however I want to gloss it, they change massively. So that's a bit of news today. So what we're going to do, we're going to crack on with the images. And I, I, I know Pat has to be in bed at, be, before 10 o'clock. So we're going to, we're going to rush and get there. Um, and I, I've, I've got to, I was going to hopefully have my donuts. By the way, I, I don't eat donuts when Anne's on because she moans at me. <laughs> She don't like, have you noticed, she don't like me um, drinking junk food, right? So she always, she always shouts at me. So uh, I hope Anne's okay. Worrying. She's right, just so, tired. Oh, she's just, just tired. tired. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Well, you know, she, she's only 62, so she shouldn't be that tired. <laughs> right, so, so you should tell her I said that. Um, and you, she said, I'm really upset now, I'm 61. Right, Longstone. Longstone on the Isle of Wight. I, I just what, what I did today, I just thought, right, there's very little in the way of Neolithic stuff on the Isle of Wight. So I thought I'm going to have to find something. So I wanted to do something. It's massive stone, right? Um, and um, well, to give you an idea, I've got a photograph and hopefully a uh, big stone there, big the little children. I know, I know they're little children, but you can get an idea of this, this interesting stone on, on the, on the um, uh, western side of the Isle of Wight. So let, 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 me, let me get my notes up here. Let, let me just sort of uh, see where we're going with this site. Now, okay, let, let me just get that right. Okay, there, right, okay. Right. It's called Longstone. It's known, it's, it's a place called Moatstone on the, the Isle of Wight. Now, it's known as a megalith, it's a megalithic monument. And strange enough, they don't have loads of megalithic monuments on the Isle of Wight, which is quite strange. Um, you usually associate the Isle of Wight with the Roman period, but nobody ever talks about it beyond that. It's like, but but yeah, Margaret was right. Yeah, we, we have mentioned the Isle of Wight. She said 
yeah, 20, 20 meters off the coast of the Isle of Wight, Margaret. And we, we were we were looking at some really early um, uh, Mesolithic evidence. And actually, Margaret, if you can remember, that's where we found some of the earliest ag agricultural evidence in the whole of Britain off the coast of the Isle of Wight. But this is actually on the land. Um, now, my notes tell me it says as follows. It is the only megalithic monument on the island. It can't be. It really can't be. That's why I'm saying there's got to be others. There's others there, right? But actually on display, again, the only... God, my God, that's quite stark. So the long stone consists of two pieces of local green sandstone, probably from a vein um, which was quarried 100 metres away. That's interesting. And it's interesting that we've got so few um, of these types of sites identified on the Isle of Wight. It might tell us that there's lots of other things going on the Isle of Wight. And, and I've always I, I, I've got a friend from the Isle of Wight. He's called Mike. Right. And uh, uh, Pete, Pete met Mike. He's the guy, uh, Pete, um, that would would do a strange dance in the party that we used to have. You remember him. Yeah. Um, and this this stone, the stone itself is four meters tall. So it really stands out. If anyone knows the Isle of Wight, it's, it's, it's fairly flat in places and the smaller lies collapsed. So so the on the edge of a, a woodland. Right. So it sort of over sort of looks the woodland a bit. And the stones and the surrounding area are in the care of the National Trust. So, it's, so when we think about this, this type of landscape, this, this type of archaeology, it's very interesting to think that, you know, we take it for granted that, you know, where, where, where I am and where Peter is and where you guys are, you've got, you've got standing stones everywhere, or at least you've got one within a five mile. But in the, in the Isle of Wight, you've just got this, this one, really. So... Until the, the, the middle, uh, until the uh, mid 1800s, the um, that stone there, the one alongside it, right, was further away. And and it's ironic that we're talking about archaeological sites that's been mucked around with. There'll be a smile on my face at this minute. Um, it's it's quite ironic that we've got site archaeological sites that've been mucked around with. One of the only monuments of this period um, that you can see on the Isle of Wight, the stone lying flat has been moved to be closer with it. Can you believe it? Um, and, you know, it, it was, um, and this was moved in, in 1856, actually, the, uh, the landowner, Lord Dillon. Um, and basically, um, he had the stone turned over to discover um it, it had a, a mortise hole but it did not he, he thought he thought that he thought there'd been basically a hole in it for some kind of altar or some kind of sh you know thing he, he, he thought there was a hole in it so he, he turned the stone over not only did he move it from where it was on the flat he actually had the thing whole thing turned over to see if there's a, a mortise hole to see if there's some kind of a hole in it some kind of to see if there's some kind of depression it wasn't it was a stone as it is today its present uh, permission uh, position has led to fanciful tales of it being a sacrificial altar stone and so in common with many other megalithic monuments modern pagan meetings and rituals are associated with it People who don't know that the stone that which is laying flat was moved in 1856. And there's a point to be made there. There's a danger in pagan rites that are based on nothing. And or are we looking at new age paganism? Two points there. This is this is a shame as well. In October 2007, the largest stone was vandalized by unknown persons who painted the white outline of a Christian cross onto the side facing the smaller stone. And that is quite terrible, really, when you think about it. One last point, and I, and I, and I want to give you an idea of dating as well which is going to be very disappointed and there's another bit of news that i want to tell you about which is actually quite odd but 
um, we'll, we'll we'll try and get that before the last bit. So the stones are associated with a with a mound. That, as I said, there's other monuments there, but not like this. There's a mound which is 21 meters long, which which runs um, to the west. In September 1956, excavations by a Mr. Hawk appear to confirm that this was the remains of a long barrow. So there's a long barrow, Neolithic long barrow there. So that the stones may be the remains of that monument. Long barrows in this part of England um, um, uh, are usually um, constructed out of earth rather than stone. But if these stones are associated with it, it's really impressive. Dating evidence. Well, although dating is difficult, pottery excavated in 1956 indicates that the mound and therefore the stones are Neolithic in date. Whilst whilst I, I, I like doing a lecture like this when 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 we're doing lots of different things, there was there there's been this is going to be in the next newsletter, right? And and I want to I want to tell you something about it. Now um let's just Hang on, how do I get off that now? Stop share. Right. We're going to go. We're going to go back online a moment. And I don't know if you've heard about it. There's a, a monument in South Wales that's been vandalised. Right. It's a prehistoric monument. Now, um, I've got a link with this, and I will tell you. Uh, Caffili, prehistoric. Monument. Monument. Vandalized. Vandalized. Right, okay, vandalism. There we go, go for it. Oh, you go. The Philly man filmed himself damaging. Hang on damaging an ancient monument right well you think about you read this and you think right okay right um now he was given it said it well the fine apparently it was four and a half thousand and what he did right the damage was because he he dug around the mound right and exposed the mound to erosion now, I was contacted by this guy about two years ago who said that he'd found a stone on the Kefili mountain that he wanted me to have a look at, right? And I didn't, I didn't go and see it and whatever, right? And, um, and it turned out it was this stone. And so he decided to dig it up himself. And but the thing was it was already known and it was a protected scheduled ancient monument all protected scheduled ancient monuments have what's called um a curtilage around them um a zone right and you can't touch the monument within that so um so what they've got to do they've, they've got to backfill they've got to put soil to backfill to protect those cup and ring marks but um you know that person has been fined and there is some protection for archaeological sites out there and um yeah maybe it's a shame i didn't see it but that's life anyway so the last bit of the lecture today i just want to share that with you and i, I want to go to oh god um the last images i'm not losing it yet so i lost it ages ago Right. What I did today, we, we, we've got these beautiful monuments on the Isle of Arran, right? And we've done this monument before, right? But what we didn't do was this. Now, what you've got, they've discovered a Neolithic Persis monument, which is, I think, oh God, I got to get this right now. I, it, it's not, I don't, it's not the furthest Neolithic Cursus monument in Britain, but it is probably that what I'm aware of, uh, one of the only ones on the Inner Hebridean Islands. So 
All I've got for you to, do, to now left for you tonight is to read out this fascinating article. And uh, it's so fresh, this article, but I've only had a glimpse over it. So we're going to share this together. It was actually found, it was actually uh, Monday the 4th of September. Archaeologists uncover complete Neolithic Cursus monument on the Isle of Arran dating to as far back as over 6,000 years ago. It goes as follows. I tell you what, let's have that image of that standing stone, which I don't think is too far away. There you go. Let's have this. Below the rolling heath on the Isle of Arran's southwest coast, overlooked by harriers and the occasional peregrine, a monument to ancient ceremony is being uncovered. In August, archeologists working alongside local volunteers began their excavation at Drummondoon of what is almost certainly the only complete Neolithic Cursus monument found in Britain. Now, um, when we say complete, it's not being buggered around with. That is fascinating. I, 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 I looked for um, I, I looked for images earlier on and I couldn't find any. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put by chance, right? I'm going to put by chance another search in the Google box, right? Hang on, if we go go with that, get rid of that. Aaron, um, Cursus. Cursus Monument. I'll just see if I type that one in. Um, Cursus Monument. Go. Yeah, there isn't any images about it. Not, not, not that I can find. Oh, there it is. We've got an aerial view. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I think uh, ancient ritual site. They've got an image there. Um, is it that one? Is it that? Is it that what they're talking about? It looks that right that yeah that's the cursus monument there it is that's what they've been surveying there you go that that must be it that must be it um so these vast rectangular enclosures as we know up to four thousand years ago obviously we, we've done this in a lecture so were they for procession ceremony gathering was it an area that the ancestors performed what was it Ranging in size from 200 meters to the Dorset one, uh, which is 10 kilometers. Um, and I think they're, they're getting Cursus monuments mixed up with avenues here. So um, we'll, just, we'll just run with them um, into um, uh, sort of interceding there. Long and bordered by ditches and banks, or sometimes large oak posts, they represent the biggest and earliest monuments constructed the constructions known to the Isles. The Aran Cursus, approximately just over one kilometre in length, sits close to the stone circle at Macri Moor, which I do believe that stone that we just seen earlier on is part of that Macri Moor monument, which was clearly a significant ceremonial site for ancient peoples, though it predates their erection. So obviously this is one of the oldest monuments on Aran. And if we go back to where we were earlier on, so we can get back to, um, hang on a minute, Let's get back to that image, because we like a map of Aaron, don't we? There we go. Uh, it's strategically located to take people from the coast up to the interior of the island and to showcase Macri Moor, which is, he's got these weird stones on it like that. There's Macri Moor. Um, and it's Glasgow University. The people who built the Cursus, who would have been some of the first farmers in Scotland, may have used it to guide visitors, but they were mainly created for spectacle. Yeah, okay, I'm going to agree with that one. We'll agree with that. They, are involved, they also involved a crazy amount of labour, having only excavated about 1% of the Cursus bank using modern implements um, in August. And it, didn't they say they uncovered it all? Well, obviously, 1% is not all, is it? Um, and obviously using modern tools rather than the, the tools that they had back then, which would have been um, um, cattle, scapulars and flint and wooden shovels, for example. 
maybe with with a flint head or something. Um, so the archaeologist believes that the cursus was either constructed over decades, as we've seen with the the um, the avenue in, which goes through Dorset, which is slightly different monuments, but it's all Neolithic. Um, I, or, or it may have been built as like like a pilgrimage route, or built all at one time, or whatever, you know. But anyway, it's different theories about these sites, and um, there must have been a phenomenal social glue binding people to realize what was likely. It's saying the vision of religion, political leader of the time. He said, "Well, I disagree with political leaders. It's just like leaders. There were small numbers of people. Having somebody leading you, and there's only small numbers of people, is a bit of an anathema, really." Anyway, that's what my thoughts, anyway. Finally, the remains of the Cursus are usually well preserved thanks to its upland location, away from intense farming areas and the presence of peat bog, do, 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 um, were first discovered by a LIDAR survey, which we've, which we've just seen. Um, um, laser light method used to um, examine the surface of the earth, conducted by historic um, environment Scotland five years ago. So, so this has been waiting there for five years. Nikki Whitehouse, professor at Glasgow University, and another member of the core investigative team, says the initial discoveries revealed a highly unusual combination of ceremonial uh, alongside farming landscape. It's also part of a continuum that is associated with Macri. Uh, more, which is quite extensive. Well, what do you think about it? What do you think of the point I made with the Isle of Wight earlier on? Um, the Isle of Arran's got to be smaller than the Isle of Wight, haven't it? So why is there all these monuments in on the the the, the Isle of Arran as opposed to the Isle of Wight? I, I'm sure Pete's going to come in here and say there's not as many big stones on the Isle of Wight. But then again, having one monument on the Isle of Wight is quite pathetic really and they quarried the stone so anyway moving on so again the glasgow university um students were involved in the excavation and it says having that number of people looking and thinking about the monument for the first time in potentially thousands of years is is amazing given a sense of energy there's a phrase about the theater of excavation and bringing people together to congregate on the hillside working through questions together in a strange way has an affinity to those people making the sense of the world when the cursus was first constructed. And on that note, in fact, this is what we do every week as a group and missing somebody like Sandra as part of this group and all the wisdom that we give to this group gives us a family approach to the history and archeology span and the questioning that we do each and every week. And I really appreciate your support. And in fact, one final point is history and archaeology is a performance on a stage. As somebody that's, that does both acting and as an archaeologist and as a writer, um, I can see it from all perspectives. Each week, we see, that we see as actors on a stage and we discuss and look at what's going on in the past. And this is what archaeology is about, a performance. And we're all part of it. And thank you for being part of it every week. And on that note, we're going to call it a day. We're going to call it a night. But I would like any questions. And uh, yeah, that was quite nice and fluffy at the end there for once. And let's let's see if we can have a bit more fluffiness from Drina and then David. Drina. No, I've got no questions. It was just fascinating. I always thank like you. it when you disagree. Oh, well, hang on a minute. I do it every week. I know, you know. I, I know it gives a macho sense. I know, yeah. I know, I know. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Drina. Right. Uh, wonderful, David. Uh, anything you'd like to tell us this week? No, thank you. I say good night to you all. Good night, uh, good, good night, good night David. David. Good night. You soon. Good Look out yourself. Good night, David. Good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night. Ooh, deep breath. Um, Pete, the meat. No, nothing for me. That was fine. I it was good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. If we got Pete the meat, we gotta have a nickname from the other Pete. Margaret, <laughs> you've got to give the other Pete a nickname now. 
<laughs> he, he doesn't want to. You said Margaret. <laughs> Well, oh, Dartmoor, Margaret, Dartmoor Pete. He's Dartmoor Pete, isn't he? Yeah, <laughs> but that would mean I'd have to call Pete the meat Cornish Pete. No, you just call him Pete. Maybe <laughs> you, you could just call, we never call him Peter. We always call him Pete, Pete Sampson. So the other one's Peter. So the other one, yes, yeah, so the other one's Peter. There we go. Pete <laughs> and Peter. You're going to remember that. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> if no. there was another Margaret, you'd call me Maggie. <laughs> no, I would. I'd have to call you Margaret because you're the first Margaret. Stop confusing the bloody issue, woman. Right. <laughs> um, Margaret, anything you'd like to say? I've upset her now. She's crying. I can well, see on the Isle of, On the Isle of Wight, that, yeah. um, that stone, it looks like a person sitting down. But uh, mm. beyond it, there's loads and loads of bracken, isn't there? There could oh. be lots of stuff lurking <laughs> under that bracken. Because, you know, oh, when, many moons ago when Tony oh, and no. I, many oh, moons ago when no. Tony and I lived in Minorca, oh, opposite yeah. where we lived, there was a great big, um, there was a big st stone wall and behind it was a big rocky mound, lots of bracken trees. And we just thought it was wasteland. We went back 20 years later and there was a Bronze Age village there the whole time wow. that we hadn't realised. Wow. wow. I thought uh, you were going to say you went into the bushes with Pete. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's okay. there the whole time and we had no idea. Uh, and, and, and that, that, is sometimes history. It, it, it can be. It can be the elephant in the room. It can be in plain sight. Yeah. Do you, know, do you know? Do you know? Do you know when you when you when you talk about a performance on a stage, right? Um, sometimes the most important thing of a of a of a performance is something that you've not noticed through the whole thing, and it, and you and, and you come out of that performance, you're not knowing what the hell happened, right? Um, there's always you, you've got to take every notice of every single detail of the past. And then even then you might not get it right and you're not going to get it right. Right. But, but every single, every single piece of what's going on in the stage of the past, you need to look at it because there's something important about it. Um, and, you know, it, it's when I was teaching, I was telling somebody else this the other day um, when I was teaching, um, when I was teaching a one-to-one um, -one student about the second world war, right. Um, I started getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the Second World War. And lots of what I believed about the Second World War were completely not what I had been taught, right? Um, that's because I, I had been missing the obvious detail all along. Yes, Germany did lose the Second World War, but I'm not talking about that level. But what I'm trying to say is that, you know, things are not always what they look like, you know? there's there's History is like that. Sometimes you can't see for looking. <laughs> and it's it, Yeah, you can't see the wood for the trees, and it's so true. It is so, so true. It's very true. Um, when and, you look at the amount of Plymouth that was actually destroyed during that war, and a similar yes. sort of thing happened in Falmouth, because they aimed at the docks, and they didn't hit, hit the houses at the back of the docks. And once again, yes. there was so much destruction. That... Yes. And, and, and obviously... History isn't as we think it is exactly. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Any, if there's nothing else from Margaret, let's do. Um, oh, here we go. Let's do Peter. No, I I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that second half, and I think you answered my questions in the in the first half. So, thank you. I'm good to be back. Good. It's good to be back, Peter, right? You should have had a shave in the meantime, but don't worry, Adam <laughs> hasn't taken any notes. Uh, okay. Peter, can I ask you one question, right? Yeah. Um, when, you, when you left us two months ago, right, did I have a baby lamb then? <laughs> I think so, yes. Ooh. Right, so she must have just been born, right, okay. Yeah, very, very, very young, yeah. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, I keep thinking she's months old, but she's not. Right. Okay. Thanks for that, Peter. Right. 
we've got to ask Pat because he's getting a bit worn out now because he's, <laughs> he's gone past 10. So, Pat, anything you want to say? No, no, I found that interesting and remembered a lot of things. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. My pleasure, my pleasure. A and finally, thing. finally, appreciate something from Adam. And by the way, anyone who wants to write anything for the next Elysic Pill, I can do. They just need to get in touch. Right, so, okay, Adam. Nothing to add, Carl. That was great, though. Cheers. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure, guys. Um, but um, anyone's welcome to have a, a little, if they want to chat about anything afterwards. But if not, if, we, if we've done everything now, uh, I'll see Peter in the morning. Uh, but other than that... Uh, no, Pete in the morning off. Forget it. Right. Uh, I'm going to say goodnight to Pete, Peter, Margaret, Drina, Pat, and Adam, and the Pope, and the three people online. Take care. Good night, all. Good night, all. Bye. Good night, night, guys. Bye. Night, night. Bye. My pleasure. Bye. Night, night, guys. Night, night. Night, night. Night, night. Margaret. Oh, ma Margaret. 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 God. Right, we're going to finish now. Um, you know, don't, nobody's said anything online, but anyway, thanks for watching online. Um, am I missing this every week? Anyone actually put anything online? Anyway, so I'm going to look in the chat box. There's nothing on the chat box in three. Nothing on the chat box on two. And there's nothing there. Okay, I'm going to say good night. Nostaki, good night. And we'll see you all soon. Bye. Next week at 7 o'clock, 7.30 next Tuesday. Uh, Nessa Brodger, update on that. Brilliant. That'll be good. Oh, that's going to bloody wear me out. And um, we've got, uh, oh, God. Wednesday, Wednesday tomorrow, 7.20. And in the morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, not 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. Oh, God, I'm going to lose the plot. Going to lose a pot, and and uh, and we do online on the Monday as well at seven o'clock. If anyone's interested, Welsh history for that one, Welsh archaeology. And just, uh, doing some shop stuff. Oh, don't forget to like, subscribe, join, and um, and there's merchandise on the other ones as well. Okay.